We are just three days away from the Bitcoin halving and the crypto markets are downright apocalyptic. And so I have a very important message for everyone, which is yes, it is absolutely time to buy. Now, of course, buying in times when the markets are utterly devastating, altcoins experiencing 50% dips or more, while unprecedented conflicts break out in the Middle East, yes, amidst all of these things, it is time to buy cryptocurrency. You see, we are just three days and three hours, 26 minutes and 27 seconds, now 25, away from the next Bitcoin happening. And that means that the cost to produce a Bitcoin will double from about $30,000 up to about $60,000, almost exactly the prices that we're at today. Now, over the last few videos, we've been covering exactly this potential. Of course, if you're not following the channel, subscribed and smashing like on this channel, please fix that now. I'd really appreciate it. It helps the channel grow. But the point is that ever since we failed to run up and break 73,000, I was saying, hey, this correction looks all too logical. And I was following some analysis that has shown that Bitcoin has never violated for any significant period of time the cost to produce a Bitcoin. And I made this content while Bitcoin was up around 70K, saying, hey, look, a dip to 60 or slightly below is totally cool. In fact, you should expect it and plan for it. And that during this period, we'd see absolute screaming deals on altcoins, which is exactly what has happened. Now, in addition to this cost of Bitcoin production jumping to 60K, effectively creating a new floor for the price of Bitcoin, according to Crown, there's a new indicator about to fire off that has marked the lows during an uptrend in five out of six times. All of this while we get a new conflict triggering a panic sell-off, which is actually very, very common in what they call the wall of worry, where effectively markets climb up against the perceived need to crash in light of global current events. Spoiler alert, the markets never crash. They continue to climb up, except these news events create the illusion that the markets need to crash. And they're often an awesome time for people who have the stones to get amazing entries into amazing assets. And that's precisely what I believe is happening right now. But where exactly should we buy? If I had to guess, I would say that any dip under 60K would set off just crazy alarm bells for the entire crypto community and that would probably be the big opportunity but in my opinion anything near 60k the low 60ks where we are right now is probably not a bad opportunity if you want to get long-term bags which of course is my entire investing strategy i've sold zero coins this entire run i'm doing exactly as i say here on this channel and holding my bags to valhalla or to ultimate doom let's see where it plays out again i like my odds but you need to be comfortable with your own remember the sicker you feel the more you know you should buy this is the thing that you can not fake when it comes to experience in crypto. If you're a newbie, you might be thinking this is the end of the world. But if you've been here and you've seen this movie a few times before, you know that buying dips when you feel absolutely disgusted with the state of the market is usually the highest expected value that you can extract from these precious and beloved crypto markets. Next, let's take a quick look at total three. This is the total market caps excluding Bitcoin and Ethereum. And you can see that they've played off these two ranges, these two sides of the range, right? Which is this prior peak that it had uh, back here in December. You can see it's playing off the lows from 2021 here on one of these dips. And again, it kind of perfectly played off these ranges. And now it's going and it's trying to create a support resistance flip here where if it can bounce off of this, you know, $530 billion range and then go up, which it almost did just perfectly here, I wouldn't be surprised if it goes and tries to play with this number again. Again, anything in this range is probably a great buy long-term because the market cycle should give us this type of growth again, which would bring us somewhere up into the multi-trillion dollars as far as altcoin market caps. But what really made this dump special is that one of the greatest traders in the history of the industry, GCR, came out of a multi-year social media hiatus in order to bullpost, to keep his cryptographically inclined brethren in the game, as it were. Let's go ahead and check out what he had to say, because I think it's very, very poignant. And we're going to go through some pieces of wisdom here that GCR has brought to the markets as someone who's become a billionaire trading cryptos and understanding when to hold them and when to fold them. GCR came out of a multi-year hiatus to say, if you've been sidelined, believe this is a good opportunity to scale into high conviction tokens. If you're fully invested, just survive. Hold your spot positions and do not capitulate. Again, we were buying all throughout 2023 on this channel. But again, if you didn't do that and you FOMO'd in as things got more frothy in sort of January, February, March, well, don't have any fear. As long as you're in good tokens, category leaders and gaming AI, and dare I say even meme coins, which we'll talk about here. And I do believe there is a way to assign some form of quality assessment to memes. As we get to the 100 million X possibility extracted coins, we'll get to those casino coins at the end. The point is if you're 
Ethereum good coins, just hold on to them. And that's why we believe in this concept of high quality coins as opposed to going after 100Xs overnight, because when moments like these happen, you can just hold on to them knowing, hey, look, that category is a core part of crypto. If Bitcoin comes back and crypto starts returning to health, which I believe it will, then this category should as well, and my token should as well. It's a beautiful way to adjust your risk and tie your own portfolio more or less to the success of the space overall, which of course I'm personally bullish on. And the point of this content is to make sure that you understand why. He said, I was enjoying retirement from social media, but don't want to see my brothers get shaken out when the future is still so bright. Now this prompted an absolute onslaught, a tidal wave of threaders to go in and start covering who exactly is GCR and why should we care at all about what this random faceless account has to say. And so I checked out one of the best of these. Check out Cyclops. Shout out to this guy. Give him a follow. This is GCR, the best crypto trader to ever exist. He turned 1k into 1 billion trading alts. I have no idea if this stat is real, uh, but estimates I've heard are that he's at least a huge 100 millionaire, if not a billionaire. What I liked here is that this thread actually went into some of GCR's lore and pulled out some real tidbits of wisdom that he's given to the audience in the past. Again, I believe mental frameworks are as powerful, if not more powerful, than individual coin picks. Obviously, if you get a thousand X, like that's good. You'd rather that than just a mindset framework. But let's be real. Having these mindset frameworks allows you to constantly see new opportunities and get ahead of them, which we'll talk about here. But I really like this one. He said, general trading principle as we watch meme tokens pump. Within alt cycles, you should crank up risk when the trend first reverses and begin to gradually protect capital as time passes. People lose because they do the exact opposite, slow early and then increasingly greedy with time. This is how you get these blow off tops in alts, which is essentially all the smart money gets into alts when nobody's really paying attention to them in these doom and gloom moments. Hint, hint. Does that seem like kind of where we're getting to right now? Doom and gloom in the alts? Yeah. Think about this for a second. As the trend reverses, the smart money, which is obviously the thing that I always talk about here, which is just getting into alts before the market gets crazy. And that way, when the market pumps, you're already set up and you can just take profits into that parabolic wall of greed. The problem is that most people don't actually take alts seriously until they're already up 20, 30 X, and then they want to throw all their money in and they're effectively paying for other people to sell. The next one that I loved is one that I hold near and dear to my heart, which is he who chases two rabbits chases neither. And this is to say, if you spread yourself out too much, you are not going to be able to optimize your experience here, which is why, as boring as it might seem at times, I try to stay focused on the core things that I'm an expert in, that I've studied, that I actually know well. And for me, that's definitely primarily gaming, but also I believe AI and memes are worth your attention. And so as we evaluate whether or not the trend will turn here at 60K, just know that I believe that it will. And I believe that applying these lessons is important in no small part because we've just learned that over 30 fund managers have actually declared ownership of the BlackRock Bitcoin ETF. And this is just the first quarter. Order, we're seeing true big Wall Street bags come in and invest into this new asset class. And I don't think they're going to let this thing fall down to zero. It's just not what I see happening. So to summarize this very simply, I'm bullish. I believe that 60K will effectively become a hard bottom for Bitcoin by the end of the month and that any dips below there should be seen as the ultimate window of opportunity to buy into your favorite beloved altcoin bags, which time after time has proven to be the best way to make money in crypto. There is absolutely no comparison. So what are those altcoin bags? Let's jump into it. I have an absolute metric ton of coins to cover here. So if you like this one, you enjoy the ambiance and you've enjoyed your appetizers, smash like because we're getting to the main dish right now. So first of all, we have Coinbase stock. Again, cbduck.base has done a great job of covering the Coinbase stock saga. And you can see here that the highs here of 280, we've now drawn all the way down to almost 200, which is a massive, massive discount. Again, we've been in coin here since about 60 bucks. I believe coin is one of the best risk adjusted ways to bet on the success of this industry. I hold a massive amount of coin stock, and I think that probably this dip is a great time to add to coin stock. Not only that, we have the WGMI Bitcoin ETF. This is the Bitcoin mining ETF. Again, this is a collection of Bitcoin miners. I don't actually hold this ETF, but I hold Marathon, I hold Coldstack, I hold CLSK, and I hold Riot. Again, Bitcoin miners, if you have no exposure there, I think they will do very well because what we're going to talk about at the end of this video is the explosion of ordinals and soon we're going to have native Bitcoin layer one meme coins, which is coming in just three days at the halving. It's actually a massive change. I haven't covered it in depth because it's actually quite complex and I don't have a tremendous amount of alpha here. I'll tell you exactly what I'm thinking and how I think the easiest way to play this is, though inevitably the best plays will come from hard work and focusing mostly on that rabbit, not other rabbits. But that said, I did a Twitter space on Bitcoin ordinals just a few days ago. You can check it out on my Twitter page at Elio Trades. If you're not following me on Twitter, you're effectively missing a lot of my content. I've been making videos about once every week, week and a half here on the channel. That's because I really want my content here to be heavily packed with information and not wasting your time.
time. I want to jam as much information and make sure that the content I put out here stands the test of time. And when you look at my predictions for the last few videos where I talked about the dip to 60K being highly likely and something to prepare for, I'm just very, very proud of the content I've made over the last 12 to 13 months here. I think it's been the best content streak I've ever been on and I want to keep elevating that content. So less content, higher quality, and making sure that every single second is packed with value. So Coinstock, Coin Bitcoin miners, uh, as you know, one of the darlings of this channel has been Celestia. We've been talking about it since about four bucks, uh, and it was one of the fastest off the lows here, pumping about 50%. You can see it here at about 10 bucks. And if we go to the seven day chart, you can see it dipped about seven and a half bucks here. And now it's up to almost 11 again. Like I said, if we dip under 60, something like this might break down again, and it might be another opportunity. My entire thesis here is about betting on the proven pre outperformers that we've seen over the last several months. You do not have to be a rocket scientist here. You have to wait for the blood, buy the blood on the good coins in the market and know that when the market comes back, that will be a blessing. We're buying Celestia at seven bucks here. We're not buying Celestia for 100x, but we are buying Celestia for maybe a 10 to 15x over the course of the cycle, which in my opinion is an amazing risk adjusted bet if you get a 10 to 15x out of any investment, especially a coin that you know has so much technology, mind share and excitement around it. That's the stuff that's easy to hold throughout the entire cycle. It's not like some meme coin that you just are scared every time it dips, you're just going to lose all your money. Next, of course, an absolute fire sale on Salami down from over 200 bucks here. You can see the little uh, two tries to break 200. And then the chain actually went down for a few days. Again, this does not mean that Solana is a bad chain. Of course, it was uh, a bit overexposed. It had too much traffic, couldn't handle it. But to me, that is, of course, a signal of massive, massive demand. And I believe the Solana community is the story of this cycle, along with base, which we'll talk about in a bit. But effectively, as we come down here, we see that this was a prior top around 120. Anything close to that 120 range seems like an amazing range to accumulate. I believe that Solana is a screaming buy here around the anything under like 130 would be an absolute screaming buy. I mean, it's not bad here. You're probably not going to regret it. But Solana for sure is something that you want to be looking at on the dip. Telegram. This is something I have not talked about yet on my channel, but it will become relevant at the end of the episode. Now, as you can see, ton is usually one of these narratives that doesn't get a lot of love. And that's because if you don't know, the entire crypto space runs off of Telegram. It's my default chat app. I love Telegram and it's got all the crypto users on it. Hundreds of millions of users. I think not that far off of a billion actual active users. And they are all crypto native, the most hardcore crypto natives. And so the thesis is that the Telegram network should, in theory, be the most valuable because it's actually the closest to the user as far as total scale in crypto. But it hasn't performed as such, partly because the project got shut down early with a ton of lawsuit and legal overhead. And then it switched from the Telegram network to the Telegram open network, aka TonCoin. And as you can see, it only came out sort of in mid-2021 in its current form. I think November 11th, 2021 was the ultimate Pico top of the market. And yeah, that just shows you that this thing literally was the exit pump for the market. Now, as I've told you before, I'm a believer that things that were one indicator in the past, maybe they were considered a tremendously bad omen in the past, they can reemerge and represent themselves as a good omen, a beckoning of newer, better things in the future. And I believe Telegram is one of those things. You see, my thesis this cycle is that crypto and actual consumer use cases are going to be the story, whereas infrastructure was the only story of the prior cycles. No one actually cared about consumer use cases. Nobody really believed that anyone was going to use crypto products. They just wanted to bet on infrastructure. Now, I believe this cycle, as it progresses, we will see some merging of mainstream culture and crypto crypto culture for the first time in a good way, which has historically been, hey, if there's a celebrity involved, GTFO, get out, run, burning building, save the baby, don't look back, just run because it's probably a scam. And that has been the case, unfortunately, with crypto and mainstream culture. But I believe strongly that this is the cycle that we will see good examples of mainstream culture. And again, that brings me back to consumer use cases, which of course I believe gaming will be the tip of the spear of, but I believe things like social media networks, social fi, and of course something like Telegram becomes extremely sexy when you think about how close to the actual user of crypto it is and how big the scale of its network is. So on this dip, again, if we go under 60K, I think Telegram becomes an interesting play. Although it's already a top 10 cryptocurrency, I believe there's actually Telegram ecosystem plays that become more juicy, which we'll talk about at the end. If you're excited for a very juicy Telegram ecosystem play, you know what to do. Finally, we've seen an absolute bloodbath on Say, but they actually have a V2 coming up. I think this could be a nice play if you're looking for a high quality L1 here. As you can see, it's a top 100 coin, a number 64 coin. This one we haven't talked about in a while, but it's finally coming down into a deep discount zone and maybe it'll come down 
down and touch this, you know, under 40 cent range. I think it's a safer bet. You're not going to get 100x out of this, but for a 10x play, I think this one makes a lot of sense to get before the real run begins. And finally, this is a newer coin called Athena. It's actually been one of the most controversial new coins in the market because it's offering a staggering 17% yield on your stable coins, USD or a staked USDE, which is their uh, Athena stable coin. Now, what they're doing actually is quite interesting. Now, during a crypto bull market, people are so desperate to long coins to get leverage long. You've heard of this. People who are going long on leverage, you know, 10x, 100x, whatever. And because there's so much demand to go long, they actually have to pay people to go short. And that is what's called a funding rate. Now, funding rates in crypto typically pay a tremendous APY to the people who are willing to hold the short positions. And so effectively, Athena is saying, hey, look, we can go farm this APY that is almost always there as long as there's a risk on climate. And we can give that yield to the people staking. And so a lot of people said, hey, look, this is the new Luna. This is going to zero. But the difference is that this is actually being collateralized and it's farming real yield from people who are longing and shorting. It's a real market, unlike Luna, which was an uncollateralized stablecoin just printing money out of nothing. So while the differences are there, the similarities are there too. And for that reason, this is a very plutonium-like coin where people want to hate it, they want to FUD it. But I think it's worth having on your radar, if only for staking some coins, knowing that many people expect this to implode. I do think this might be one of those hated rally coins where people want it to fail. They want it not to gain too much traction. But of course, that attention might drive this thing up. So I think Athena is an interesting bet. If we get a deeper correction here, I think it's something that's worth adding to your more long-term high conviction portfolio. And another coin that I actually haven't talked about because it was just too big and too weird is is WorldCoin. Now, WorldCoin is effectively a bet on Sam Altman. It's a Sam Altman coin. He doesn't actually own any equity in OpenAI. And so in theory, this is his AI play to actually get rich. I'm not sure I fully believe that he cares because he drives a $20 million McLaren. At the same time, WorldCoin has this Sam Altman association and it's finally come down off of what was a pump here up to 11 bucks. It's on about a 60% discount here. And so a deeper correction here, I think WorldCoin is kind of a sleeper as far as an interesting bet that could soak up a lot of the spotlight in the AI coin narrative. Now, another AI coin that we mentioned is Near. This thing had an all-time high of 20 bucks. It's come down off its $9 high here. I think Near is very interesting because they're releasing a ton of AI infrastructure later this year. I learned that Near was actually an AI research team before they launched blockchain infrastructure. So again, Near could be a very interesting play for getting AI exposure as well as sort of broad-based blockchain infrastructure exposure. Now, I should have prefaced that we are jumping into the AI sector. Again, AI has been a very interesting sector that I want to separate right now into two subsectors. This is going to be easier for you to understand. First, you have the DPIN and infrastructure plays, right? DPIN effectively is decentralized physical infrastructure. It's taking computing power and allowing people to sell it online. And the thought process here is that AI requires so much computing power that these decentralized networks for compute are going to become utterly necessary and that crypto is the way to have these decentralized compute networks. That is the thesis that I've been using for investing in Akash for years now. Of course, if you're a viewer of this channel, you've heard me talk about Akash forever, but there's a lot more deep in projects and a lot more cloud compute projects coming to the market. There's actually many of them. And I consider these fairly different than these meme-like AI projects that I'd put into almost like a meme token-like bucket. Now, of course, there are some good projects in here, but the reality is I think anyone telling you they know who the winner of this AI race is going to be is absolutely full of shit. And you need to have a grounded understanding that if you're buying AI tokens, you're trading on attention and the attention of AI as a narrative. AI to me is going to trade quite like meme coins. And we saw this in the days before the market actually crashed. We saw AI coins running 30, 50, 60, 70 percent pumps in a day, which is meme coin numbers, which again to me means you're just trading on attention. And anyone telling you that they're not trading these tokens because of the quality of the products behind them, but the quality of the attention behind them. So essentially, the way I'm trading AI coins and meme coins is fairly simple. Now, the benefit of AI coins is that there's far less of them. It's a lot harder to create a convincing AI coin than a convincing meme coin, which only takes a picture, whereas AI coins, in theory, take much more development. The problem is that over the last week or so during the market correction, a few AI projects actually rugged their tokens. Now, they're not tokens I've spoken about on this channel because I've spoken about tokens with doxed teams that wouldn't rug, of course, or they would be risking their own life in prison, but that created a contagion effect. And so a lot of these tokens got giga dumped on this price pullback. Looking for strong tokens that got dumped by association, but not because they did anything wrong, is an interesting way to look at this particular pullback. And I think it will pay dividends when people realize that, no, there was actually nothing wrong with that project. People just panic sold it because there was problems in the sector. So separating the two sectors, we have AI infrastructure like Deepin, that is actually for cloud compute. And those are serious infrastructure projects, much easier to invest in and the safer play. 
Then you have the AI meme-like tokens, which are the chatbots and doing all kinds of AI processing and trying to compete with more traditional AI products. And those to me should be traded like meme coins, knowing that you could lose 60, 70, 80% of your money like this. But of course, they have the potential to pump 50, 100x. And for that reason, they should be a part of anyone's DGEN portfolio. So to clarify, Near would be very serious AI infrastructure. Uh, Akash, very serious AI infrastructure. Echelon Prime, actually also very serious AI infrastructure because they have this Wayfinder token, which allows you now, and they demoed this, by staking Prime, you can earn this AI token. And that AI project allows you to, with natural language, command an AI agent to do swaps between bridges, between chains. It's a really interesting protocol that actually very well might have a seriously awesome product for the crypto space. So Prime is getting a very well-deserved AI pump, and yet it's still down from 26 bucks down to 19 bucks or so here. If this collapses a little more, maybe this is your entry into Prime that you missed back when we were talking about it under three bucks here back in the fall. Another high quality AI project I'm going to add to my portfolio, I'm looking to add here, I don't hold yet, is Netmine token and MT. This one is a competitor to BitTensor Tau, say significantly lower market valuation. So again, we're looking to make money here in crypto and the smaller the vows, the easier it is to have upside. Next, we're going to jump into gaming, which is of course is something that you know is my favorite topic here on the channel. And in my opinion, gaming is entering into a serious value zone as we're going to see from the following projects. Now, obviously we've been covering Immutable X since you know the 40 cent range on this particular run up all throughout the bear market. But I told you as it was breaking the $1.50 resistance level, it was going to rocket. And as you can see, right when that happened, it rocketed almost without pause up to about $2.40 or so. Now it never really came back and tested that $1.50 range. And we're seeing it start to get within that value territory. Now, in my opinion, that $1.50 range should be a significant support zone because it's something that kind of held throughout the entire bear market. So anything close to that $1.50 range on Immutable X, I would say that you're, you're in for a potential 10X here on what is the front running crypto gaming token, almost guaranteed to have some pumpiness during any gaming focused moment within the market. I think it's one of the best risk adjusted bets. I will take a second here and say, of course, if you follow this channel, you know I'm a seed investor. I've never sold any Immutable X. I've been holding for years now, and I actually hold every single token that I've mentioned here on this channel today. So just a clear disclaimer here that I do hold the tokens I'm talking about on the channel, and I hope they do well. I also think it's really important to hold the tokens I talk about on the channel because then I'm in the same boat with you guys, actually riding the waves with y'all, and I think that's really important to do. Smash like if you agree that I should be holding the tokens I talk about. I think it's pretty simple logic. Now, next, I'm going to talk about Wilder World. Now, of course, this is a Superverse partner. And when I told you guys at the beginning of the cycle that Superverse was about to take over the space and integrate the token into every single major industry leading product in the entire space. Well, I wasn't kidding. And this is a great example. Wild World just partnered with Samsung, one of the biggest companies in the entire world. This game is about to be on Epic Games. And one of the most slept on pieces of information is that they're just beginning what's called Project Domino, which they're going to be rolling out this incredible marketing plan over not just the next year or so, but they actually have a five year plan that they're rolling out all these phases of their technology. It is most certainly in my opinion, opinion, a behemoth in the space, some of the best technology and some of the best builders, which is why it's an utter coup that the Superverse token is about to be integrated into their ecosystem. There's a lot more exciting stuff coming up with Super and Wilder. Make sure you stay tuned. Next, the project also announced a partnership with Joyride. Now, Joyride is interesting because they actually have two of the most successful blockchain games in the history of the industry, except they are on Flow blockchain, where nobody goes and nobody cares about. But they have hundreds of thousands of daily users and actual wallet activity on a blockchain blockchain that unfortunately no one's really paying attention to. Their Super Champs project is a very interesting one where there's multiple games around a single IP, millions of downloads, and this is one of the highest quality teams that I've actually met here in the gaming space. Really, really smart guys. And what I believe is a genuine piece of alpha here is that they have this NFT collection that I don't think anybody really knows about. It's only got a thousand ETH volume and the assets trade for 0.086 ETH, which is just a couple hundred bucks here. If I was a guessing man, I would say that these would be eligible for their upcoming token airdrop. And it just seems like nobody really knows about this one. So I know that the way with NFTs is they can pump really hard. So just be careful when you go to visit this page, uh, if it does pump or something, once people do find out about this, understand that the risk adjusted bet changes as the price goes higher. But I do believe that this is a very sleepy way to get access to what I hope will be a very successful gaming project here in crypto land. So definitely check out this. I think it's some pretty good alpha here on these super champs NFTs. And I'm not kidding. It just doesn't stop here. Godzilla, the first 
partner for the Superverse, where super token holders got exclusive loot and access to validator NFTs, which are, in my opinion, some of the hottest potential assets in the entire crypto gaming space. They just raised $30 million. They are definitely in a league of their own, and they will be looking to bring crypto gaming mainstream. I'm an investor, I'm a partner, I'm a node holder, and I believe this is going to be a transformative partnership for the Superverse. The truth is that gaming had some serious crazy hype coming into the new year throughout December and into January, and I won't name names, but there were several high profile launches that I believe drained some liquidity from that narrative. And I think that it's starting to become a much healthier environment and that throughout this dip over the next one to two months, you'll see some of the best opportunities arrive in gaming as people turn to other narratives. That is an opportunity. You don't wanna be buying in when there's peak froth. All the best buys that I made were when absolutely no one was paying attention to gaming throughout Q3 and Q4 of last year. Now, I believe that that fundamental greed reset has happened and that there are some seriously top tier builders that will be hitting the market at very reasonable valuations. Just gonna quickly shout out Carrot Token. I'm an investor and advisor. They are looking to launch very soon here and it's terrible conditions. So you very well might get an amazing entry into Carrot, which I think is amazing for the community. And same with Metalcore, very same. These are both top tier games, top tier studios, and the conditions are just not great. So you might be able to get a non-hyped launch. It's in my opinion, the best possible scenario for the community, which eventually is the best for the project. But last, thank you for your patience. We've gotten through AI, we've gotten through gaming. I've given you my particular picks and why I think that they are so important. And it probably shouldn't surprise you that I'm extremely passionate about the projects that have partnered with Superverse. Every single game in the industry wants to partner with Superverse. The project has its pick of the litter and is only partnering with the creme de la creme. And that's why a lot of my favorite projects are partners with Super because the project gets to pick the best of the best and only the best. And that's what's so exciting about the moment we're in right now. And I'll just say that what you've seen over the last few months is just a beginning to Super looping together every protocol in the gaming space, the really good ones. And there's gonna be a really exciting next chapter. Make sure you're following the Superverse Twitter with bell notifications on. I promise you, that will be something you absolutely do not regret. But now on to the part of the video, which is about getting grotesquely, disgustingly, irresponsibly rich here in Cryptoland. And I know the sector that everyone is most curious about is meme coins. Now, meme coins are an interesting breed of token because it seems as though you can just cast a hundred bucks out here and there and make millions of dollars. But really where the big gains come in is identifying the strong liquidity vacuums that continue their parabolas, continue to attract users. And in my opinion, the easiest way to do that with meme coins is to identify category leaders. Now, category leaders in meme coins to me is about finding the absolute leaders of meme coins on each particular chain. And so we can break down those category leaders. And of course, based on how big they are already, estimate whether or not these are going to be ones that could make 100x, 20x, 10x. Now, I don't use CoinGecko anymore, but I will for this particular example, because you can see here that the total market cap for Doge peaked in 2021 at $88 billion, almost $90 billion. That's just one freaking meme coin. It's insane. It's insane. It doesn't make any sense. But it shows you that there is not really a ceiling on memes. And that once this cycle truly kicks off, well, Doge might make it to a few hundred billion. And that means that the smaller meme coins might make it to tens of billions pretty easily. In fact, I would expect that there would be at least a few coins that come up and touch somewhere close to a meaningful chunk of Doge. We actually know this to be true because as you can see here, SHIB went up and touched 40 billion. And that was about half or a little under half of what Doge ended up reaching at 88 billion. So you can see here that it's not like the next meme coin is one tenth or 5%, it's more like half and then maybe a third for the next one. So if Doge makes it up to 200 billion, maybe the next meme coin would be at 100 billion or 50 or something thereabout. So just because you see a meme coin at near a billion dollars doesn't mean that there's no pumps left. Remember, this stuff is totally illogical, reflexive nonsense. It's the bubble of all bubbles and that's why you have to treat it quite like a casino. But the goal with the casino is how can you get the best odds? Which games give you the best odds? odds of return. And if I can play a game that I think has about a 50-50 shot, meaning, hey, look, if this cycle continues, then I think this coin will go on a mega parabola or a 50% chance, oh, look, this cycle doesn't continue and I lose my money. Well, what will give me the best risk-adjusted odds of a parabola? 
And that's where we get to category leaders. And that's where we want to talk about which coins are the leaders on each chain. And now we're going to talk about Brett, which is the leading meme on base. Now I talked to you about Toshi, which was Brian Armstrong's cat. However, Brett is actually a bigger meme on base. It was something we talked about briefly. I don't actually own Brett yet, but I'm looking for maybe one more try down under 60 where I will start getting exposure to Brett. The narrative here is that Brett is one of the characters from the same cartoon as Pepe. And Brett is a buddy of Pepe. And Pepe being the main meme on ETH, Brett would be the main meme on the buddy chain, which is base. It actually makes a lot of sense. It makes a little bit more sense than Brian Armstrong's cat, though I do like Brian Armstrong's cat and I still hold it, I'll continue to hold it. But this one makes even more sense. And so Brett feels like it could be the highest quality meme on base. And base is competing with Solana now on transaction volume and all these user metrics. I think base is a huge narrative that is not to be ignored. So Brett is going to be a significant meme coin that probably shouldn't be ignored. Now, I've talked to you about Pepe. Pepe is the main main coin on ETH. But my next pick here is actually MOG. You guys know about my, my love for MOG. It just has this crazy, crazy community. And as it draws down, it just feels like obviously the chart got completely uh, destroyed. But I believe MOG will be part of the meme coin cycle. Whenever it does take off, I think MOG will find new highs. And because it's much smaller, it's under 200 million now, whereas Pepe's 10x that size, I think it has a higher potential to grow. Again, you want to look for coins that are not going to die and be a part of the next meme coin frenzy. And I believe MOG fits that criteria. So at a smaller market cap than Pepe, I believe it is the better risk adjusted bet. Next, we all know about the dog. It's got a hat on, dog with hat. It's the number one meme coin on Solana. And for that reason, as we go lower, I think as far as meme exposure, dog with hat makes a lot of sense. It's the chosen meme of the cycle. And this is an interesting pick that we haven't talked about before. And it is resistance dog. Now, the reason why I like resistance dog is I was actually put onto it by the person who bought Brett at like a fraction of the market cap. They're, they're up millions of dollars on Brett. And Resistance Dog is effectively the leading meme on Telegram. Remember, I told you about the Telegram narrative earlier. Well, the best proxy to get access to the success of a chain, let's imagine Telegram takes off as a narrative, well, it's going to be the leading meme coin is going to print some of the biggest gains. We've seen that with Solana, the leading meme coin, Dog with Hat, went to the billions, made thousands of Xs, made people rich overnight. We saw with Base, it took off. Uh, Brett and the other meme coins went bazillion X, took off, and, and printed insane gains for people. And I believe that Resistance Dog is effectively the play on Telegram open network. So ton, Resistance Dog, that is my dark horse play. Again, and remember that when it comes to meme coins, this is very much casino vibes. They're not based on any tech. There's no builders that are going to be able to bring a fundamental narrative. If the hype's there, it'll continue to grow. And if the hype doesn't come back, it goes to zero. I think in a way, meme coins are a healthy way to conceptualize around crypto because I think people get trapped with their bags thinking that every crypto coin is going to revolutionize the world when in fact they are risk adjusted bets. Whereas I feel like with meme coins, they're kind of like fun gambles. People don't take them as something as seriously like a Solana or an Ethereum where people really join the cult and become obsessed with it and think it's going to change the world as opposed to saying, hey, look, this is a market I want to gamble on and I think I have a chance to make money. And I think that that's a healthier approach to keep you a little less emotionally connected to your investments, which inevitably you will want to sell at certain periods of time. And if you get too emotionally invested, you become clouded. So I think some element of meme coin trading is actually healthy because it allows you to treat your crypto plays a little less emotionally. I don't know. Let me know if that makes sense to you. Again, I hope my category leader framing works for you. Uh, the last one I forgot to put in there is Geo Bowden, which of course is the leading political meme on Solana. I think it definitely has more legs throughout the election season if we are so lucky as to see a continued cycle. And no, the alpha actually doesn't stop there. I told you I was going to talk about runes. Now, Leonidas and I did a podcast or a, a, a Twitter space just a few days ago. Go ahead and check it out. It's on my page at Elio Trades on Twitter. And if you don't know what's going on, effectively a new meme coin protocol called runes is about to take flight on the Bitcoin network. People are going to be able to trade native Bitcoin meme meme coins. And I know what you're thinking, maybe the Bitcoiners won't want to do this, but inevitably there will be some meme coins that take off there. So here's how you get set up. It's actually technically a lot harder than other places. There's a lot of hurdles to overcome. So if you're frustrated, it's okay. Go comment under Leonidas's page. He's got like a discord and some other stuff. There's a whole community to help you get involved with runes. It'll be a little bit more of a challenge, but that challenge comes with potentially higher rewards as it's not as easy to get involved. So check it out. Download Xverse app. It's another uh, browser extension. You want to send Bitcoin to it, buy a runestone on um, 
ME on BTC. Runestone is actually a project that Leonidas conceived of, and Rune meme coins will magically appear in your wallet. If you go to ME on BTC, which is Magic Eden uh, Bitcoin Marketplace, what you'll see here is that this is the Runestone. This is actually an ordinal. And we also have Rune Pups as well as Bitcoin Wizards. These three are the top in volume for very specific reason, which is that everyone's most bullish on these. Wizards, Pups, and Runestones. Uh, Runestones will be airdropping you not one, but three different meme coins throughout the course of, I guess, the few weeks following the launch of Runes, which is going to happen at the Bitcoin halving. Uh, Pups is effectively the most popular meme on Bitcoin right now. It comes from the Bitcoin puppets, which are the most successful ordinal, or I guess slightly tied with node monkeys, but puppets, the ones I see way more of. And you have Bitcoin wizards, which was started by Udi and a bunch of these early Bitcoin ordinal sort of influencers that really helped popularize the movement. These three are the ones you want to focus on. Are you going to make money? I don't know. Are you going to lose a bunch of money? I don't know. But if you want to play runes and just on simple mode, you buy runestone, pups, and wizards. And these are the three that will get you access to memes on Bitcoin. Now, the truth is that if you want to go to that next layer down, you can listen to that Twitter space I did. And Trevor, who was talking on the space, tells you essentially how to get into runes. What you'll actually need to do is set up a Bitcoin node, run the Bitcoin software, run the ordinal software, and sort of set up all this technical stuff. It'll take you a few days to do that. So if you want to do that, you kind of want to be there yesterday. But effectively, the next layer of advancement here is to actually be there hunting new Bitcoin runes as they drop the day of the halving and very shortly thereafter. And you might find yourself some absolutely insane gems. Again, no promises here. This is that 100x Valhalla or zero type thing where you might make a million dollars by doing this and you might have all your Bitcoin disintegrate. So no promises here. Whenever something new and innovative like this, like a whole new fungible token standard coming to Bitcoin, it makes a lot of sense to be paying attention because usually the early winners there can catch some significant historical provenance. All right, this has been an absolutely loaded episode. I didn't even do my NordVPN plug. So please click on the NordVPN affiliate link. As you guys know, it's the one piece of software I believe every single person in crypto must have. It's just a few dollars a month. You get a massive discount for using my link. And if any of this alpha served you and you don't have a VPN, please sign up with my link. It is an absolutely critical piece of software to be running while you're browsing the internet as a crypto user. As always, if you guys enjoyed this, you know what to do. Smash like, subscribe, and I'll see you very soon in the next episode.